Yep, my name is J.P. Gunner. Um, beauty of this is I'm a product of the South Carolina high school football system. I grew up right outside in Irmo, graduated from Dutch Fork High School, then crossed the border, played my college ball at Lenore Ryan in Hickory, North Carolina, spent two years there coaching, um, spent a long year in NAIA football, if anybody's done, I call it my tour of duty in Kentucky at Pikeville University. And then I got very lucky to spend nine years at the Citadel and then spent two years in East Carolina. And then about just over a year ago now, I came on the catapult and I handled all the scouting of the Carolinas along with 50% uh, of the country with dealing with our collegiate accounts when it comes to our recruiting data. And first and foremost, as far as our recruiting data, we are in no way trying to replace the high school coach. We are trying to form a great foundation to give the most verified data also on the high school coach to these college coaches so it's a one-stop shop so when they do need to call Coach Brent over at Camden, they've got a cell phone number, they've got his email readily available, no chasing it down and connecting the college coach and the high school coach together. That's what we've done. And then about six months into the job, I realized that I work for the best technology, sports technology company in the world. We may be the only company where American football is the final frontier. I mean, they've gone in, you talked about soccer, we've learned a lot about soccer because we're in the Premier League. Um, we're in rugby, lacrosse, everything. But now they've inserted themselves into American football, and that's where we feel we can bring a great, verified speed metric for these kids. Um, I was talking to, you know, Paige over at Northwestern, and he was like, his, his wide receiver had a great day this past Saturday. We're in the best up here in Charlotte. He goes, what's good? To give you a quick threshold, if young man runs 20 plus miles an hour, he's probably moving. And the nice part is, is that with our metrics right here, it is game speed. I can put this on the kid at 7 on 7, you can go out there and do football movements, and you can verify game speed. It's not track stars, it's not based off of a start, who's got a great start. It's literally, you slide it on the kid, you capture the data all day, and you say, hey, there was no 40 yard dash, but so it's top speed. And there's some health metrics, and I'm going to let Gordon explain to it. Gordon's a high school coach. He's out of our central office um, in Wilmington, Massachusetts, right outside of Boston. But he is also a high school coach, and he uses it with his players also. He's going to give you some real-world applications here, and I'll let him kind of introduce himself. So, Gordon. Hey, everyone. I'm uh, Gordon McWall. I don't have quite as impressive a football background as JP here, but I did play at the University of Buffalo, and I coach at a school up in Massachusetts called Warren's Academy. Um, we're a small uh, boarding school, day school. Um, we have great athletes that come through. Uh, the last one that you guys might know is AJ Dillon. Um, he's at the Packers. But I've been tracking my kids for the last three years, um, and it's been great. I mean, and just right off, right off the bat, as soon as you get the vest on, they're, they run harder, there's no, there's less slope, and they're more engaged in, in what we're doing, and they, you can back up your conversations with them with the data. So it's not just, hey, coach is just saying this to me, you're getting that objective feedback where they can say, hey, you know what, you need to run, you're only running 60 miles an hour, it doesn't matter if you run up for five. Because if you can't see, do that and translate into the game, you're missing the other biggest part. Um, so my kids are going to be wearing these for the last eight years when we've been playing in college where they're born with me all the way through and they're going to be going uh, to their, their schools and wearing it. So they'll have data from that help them get recruited and then they'll also have data that will hopefully get them drafted one day. Um, so I'm going to show you, to kind of show you around the data, we really want this to be open, open form. So if there's questions, feel free to just jump in at any time, um, ask me, JP, JP knows a ton about the recruiting side and I'm more on the coaching side and the day-to-day -day use. So when you log in right here, just <coughs> log in, I'll we'll just bring it right to the dashboard. And this is JP's account, I'll jump over in a second, but this is some of the teams that like and camps that we've been at. Um, like Carolina Exposure last week, BTOs, and then you can even see like the players that were saying last and everything. And everything with any catapult one works left to right. So you start up over here on the left, you have all your sessions. Um, you can tag them whether they're a game or a practice session. I mean, you can just work your way over. Hey, here's what my players did last. Here's how they compare it to the team average. You can click on that and then drill it all the way down. So I'll show you guys a little bit of my, my stuff here. 
So, yeah, so this is big. So, again, yeah, same dashboard, right? You got some of my practice sessions in here. You have the games. So when you want to like drill in on any of the players, you can click on the squad season, and you can just see, like, hey, that's how my player compared to the team average. Those bars are the team average, and the orange stars are that the individual. So you can say, hey, this this kid's underperforming. He's maybe we need to or maybe he's overperforming. We need to get him into the game a little bit more. Um, everything's in drop down, so you can just pull up the different players. You can look at the different metrics that are in there. Um, and then you can even do the splits, which is seven on seven, that team run, first quarter, second quarter, things like that. So you can drill down and say, hey, how much distance are we covering in pregame? Um, and just coaches look at this, or your individual players could look at it too. You can give them access. So they can be like looking at each other every day. My, if I didn't get it off after an hour after a game, I was getting my phone would start blowing up with text messages. Hey, coach, where's my dad? They, they love it. Um, like I said, the loafing portion of it within like the conditioning, like they're trying to get top speeds when they're running because they want to you know, compete with each other. So I have to say, hey, run hard. They just did it. And that saves me some breath and a lot of frustration. Um, Real quick. Yeah. yeah, the interesting part, so we've taken this, we're, we're rolling it out. We, we kind of did a soft opening, so to say. We took it to the state of Alabama and put it on some kids actually during Friday nights and get some game speed data off of it. Interesting part, I think, is week two of the season. I mean, down in Alabama, it's probably close to 90 degrees in pregame. We put it on one of their top receivers. He's out there. He does everything. Catches punts, catches kicks. They're doing RBAs. They're doing everything. Our guy takes it back to home, plugs it in. He calls the coach. He said, you may want to be careful. He goes, what do you mean? He goes, this kid ran over three and a half miles in pregame. I mean, you can clock to see exactly what your guys are doing at all different points and times. Because when he says segments, you can go in and say, all right, we knew pregame was this segment. And then, I mean, he can even show you once he gets there, hey, this was when we were standing for the national anthem. Because the kid's not moving. But he said, be careful of your guy. Because all the kid was doing was catching kicks, running it back to the kicker, go over high five coach, run down the sideline, go catch a couple passes. And then before you know it, he's already, I mean, you were saying that y'all had kids that you tracked almost ran a marathon in a week yep. from mileage just based upon, you know, just getting it on the kids and being able to know, hey, where's the wear and tear on your roster actually happening? And how much does that weigh when you put it at two years? A few grams. Two grams? Few, yeah, I think it's, I forget exactly how many grams, but. JP, the other side of that too is that we use, you know, we use that. And uh, you can also track it. If you're going to get this many bursts in a game and, and you're not getting them in practice that week, you may, I mean, we would have inside run sessions where our kids weren't getting big, long bursts. So they were certain days we might have them do eight or ten bursts while they were waiting their turn, eight, eight or ten 30 yard bursts just to get those bursts. So, because that's what they were going to do on Friday night, right? We hoped, yeah. Yeah, and that's really it. It's like cramming your practices and adjusting it a little bit just so that you're getting them ready for the game day. Like, you don't want to have a game a game on Tuesday when you have to be performing at 100 on Friday. Um, one of the stories I, I like is just we, I was told by uh, one of our support team back in back up in Boston. Um, she used to work at, at Temple, and one of the things that they were trying to do was figure out how they could get more use out of their practice time. So they started looking at, hey, like, well, you know, they're doing all these sprint yards, and that's great, but they were doing all the sprint yards in between, um, like, drills. So instead of having them run in condition at the end of practice, they just said, okay, we're going to move the drills around so that they're getting them all in between. So, hey, you know, the offensive lineman and the the north side end zone, they run down to the south side end zone to get that to the, get that condition in there, and then no condition at the end of practice. So they they do that based off of looking at really just how much how many yards they need to get throughout the game, and then how to really utilize that within um, their daily practice. Uh, and this is kind of like what JT was talking about up here at the activity chart, where you can just drill down. So like you can see in pregame, right now I'm looking at. Math. You can pull up pregame and say, okay, you're in a mile and a half. So maybe that's a lot, maybe that's it's normal. But if that's at three miles, I'd be freaking out because that's we only run six miles in the game. So if you're able to look at it and say, okay, well, this is what we do in practice. 
This is what we do an inside run, team run, seven on seven. Do we want to do that on Thursday? Do we want to do that on, on Wednesday? Um, so, the other thing I like about it is my, it keeps me accountable to as a coach because it's kind of similar to that Temple example. Like, in my random practice, right, am I pushing the twos and the threes and those key reserves, getting them involved in the drills? I wasn't. My kids were spending about 8% of the time moving, and if they weren't in those back starting group, it was even less. So I had to change how I did my drills and set them up, and then just improve how much time the effort was putting in up there. Um, just to explain this screen for you, this is just a heat map, right? So it shows you exactly where the player was, exactly when they were, and the red is the most intense, but or the places where they spend the most amount of time, and then the blue is the least amount. And you can see all their strengths. So they touch the long touchdown runs, what they're doing on kickoff for those special team players, the red lines are going to be the most intense strengths, while the white lines are going to be your least intense. So you can really understand, okay, are they able to hit those top speeds? Are they maintaining them? Um, the orange down here is if they went over what you expected in the game. So if it was 80, uh, explosive efforts, you want to be able to make sure you get that within practice. So it'll show you, hey, you know, you did 104% of what you normally did in the game, you did 100%, 103, 109, so on and so forth. And then you can even break down the five, every five minutes, what they're doing. So one of my favorite ones to look at here is you just pull up top speed, and you can really just see it, hey, like, are they falling off in that second half? Are there are certain areas where, let's see what I want to do, it's pretty good. So like, if this was in the game, and they just kept dropping off at the end of every quarter, maybe that's a conversation that you can have saying, like, this is why we're doing the extra condition, and this is what you need to work on in the off season uh, to close that gap. Because you're not able to maintain those top speeds that you were hitting in the first half compared to the second. Any questions so far? What, what metrics have you found to be most useful? I mean, obviously, you got a lot out, you got a quarter, you they're going to run a lot more, especially from a top speed perspective. What <coughs> measurements have you seen to be the most beneficial for an offensive lineman? Yeah, so believe it or not, everything is going to be aligned like to what their position is. So even though this is three miles, it kind of doesn't matter if you're getting them used to that. Um, but looking at things like top speed, are they able to hit those top speeds? And what is it for alignment? Um, I was looking at impacts because I want to know how much it's a hit. You can adjust the sensitivity of this so you can see more of the line in contact versus those big collisions that are inside the box. And then uh, player load here, that tells you it's a number between zero and 1,000. Just tells you how much work you did in that session. So I'll think of it like running a 5K versus walking a 5K. One of those is way more intense than the other. So by looking at that number and seeing that that jumps, that's how you can understand how much work they're doing in the volume. Um, and then lastly, I like to look at this power score number. It just tells you how much force they're putting out there. It's a watt per kilogram. So how explosive the player is being, if they're flat, that number can drop down. If they're having the game of their life, so they look at sure explosive, that number will be up. So I like to kind of look at that. Anyone else? Good. Cool. Um, another thing I like about it too is it helps me open up dialogue with my with my players. So we have, we've all had those players right, where they don't listen no matter what you say. You tell them, hey, you got a QB that's got a slide, running back, who fights for an extra yard almost all the time. Um, we had one of those QBs who just always looked for contact, and he had double the amount of impacts as our running back who ran 30 times a game. So I can walk up to him after the game, and I'm like, okay, you're going to hurt, I can need you, you know, I see some kind of depends on you. And he was like, what are you talking about, coach? I do slide, I do get out of bounds. And I pulled up all this data and showed it to him. And he was like, oh, I get that now. And then the next game, his numbers were cut in half. So like, he was kind of back it up. And I was a kid that like, no one thought he would ever listen. He just, the next week, he stopped doing it. Some kids just need to see it, and it helps. Um, you got anything to add to I mean, it, the one thing that I've heard a lot of people come down to is the nice part is that you can set the bar for your shoes. For your players. Yes. So you can say, hey, here's what our starters are doing output wise. Here are the metrics that are important to mine. You know, and also different styles of play. Some guys, they're all, they're all back, you know, lower their shoulder if they're 
I, I spent nine years in the triple option. God forbid if we track con contacts to the quarterback, you know. But you know, you're going to have those metrics, and you can actually. He's showing you right now where you can compare actually two guys on your roster, <laughs> where if one's the backup and one's the starter, you can actually put side by side and be able to say, hey. You know, you've got that kid, like I said, who just doesn't listen to you and says, man, I should be starting. I should be starting. Okay, so let, we pull it up. We show you, this is our starter. This is what you do. What what work has been justified for you to be the starter? You know, so it's going to give you another metric just to lean on. Obviously, it's nothing to live and die by. We're still humans, and we're not going to get this world up to the robots and to the machines. But it is a aspect that will give you a more verifiable you guys found any number of one of the, the algorithms that you guys have that correlates with their work during the week and then they're higher likely to have an injury or pull a hamstring or, you know, sort of, I guess, the soft tissue ones, but just that, it, that there's one that, it, I mean, I know it's not going to be a one for one, but that you can see that they ran like so much further this week and so that, that on Friday night they, yeah, it's it's probably that player load number, and that's really what what we hang our hat on as as a as a company. Honestly, um, it's proprietary to us, and when you see those numbers spike and adjust a lot, that's when you see those soft tissue injuries. And what you basically want to see is a piece of it. So as distance goes up, player load should go up. If distance is going up, player load going down. They're probably not doing enough work, vice versa, right? Um, and I can show you kind of a, an example. So I usually use this game as a benchmark. It's one of our tougher first games, and I also, it's pretty easy to set these. You just come in, click these three lines, and then you can set these game values for the individual, a skill group. Uh, if you, so if you want to have everybody measured against that Division One running back, you can just measure everybody there. We can get it individually, and then it changes everything to 100%. So as I kind of went through the year, you get this is really what you'd probably want to see for most games in like a pretty heavy practice where it's like 80, 75%, a little bit of orange in there, so nothing too crazy. Um, but he was starting to get pretty beat up as we, after this game, the first game in October. You get to see him limping around a little bit after, after the game, a little bit more orange. This game was really rough for us. You can see that's an intense game, like 150%, 126, 120. Um, so completely overworked, told coach, knew it was uh, coming, I knew it was coming at, at Milton, and he only made it to halftime in this game against uh, Tabor before he pulled his hamstring. So by setting those benchmarks and understanding like, hey, this is the work that they're used to being able to do and we're overworking them, like, it was just a matter of time before that happened. Um, we also got a flat tire on the road to this game. <laughs> so it was pretty, so this 2.57, if you like pulled up on anyone else, they're all they're always significantly lower than what they are always are. They were flat in warm ups. They were flat getting off the bus. They had zero energy, and all of their power scores are down like twenty five percent. So things like that it just adds a little context to like what you're seeing. So it's not just like, am I just trying like do I just think that they're this way, or are they actually this way? It's essentially like some of the biggest stuff I get from it. So during that week, then, like, say you pull that up, that Tabor game, yep. and, like, the next week, you're like, all right, it's not coming. Well, what do you guys adjust for this? So what you, would, what you would adjust is essentially, um, you just, so you essentially adjust, like, their work, overall workload. So you'd like to essentially do it here, where you can you <coughs> so going into these weeks, which we were kind of we were inside a lot and then we had some uh, a lot of rain and thunderstorms and so it's not as many practices kind of going for him. But like you would adjust those, get them more get them more yardage or less yardage in practice. Um, if they need more work, you have to make sure you're getting them the extra sprint yards at, at the end of practice. Sometimes it's as simple as, hey, we're gonna do 10 gasses at the end of the day. Um, other things you can look at is getting them more treatment, more stuff, getting them more treatment. Um, making sure that they're not in contact if that's, you know, kind of what their position is and everything like that. How do you take the, the game data and calculate more or less work in practice? Like what is so that's a, when I showed you switching it all to like 100%, you set the, as the game value. So you just say, hey, this is what we did in that game. I like this game. It was an intense one. I'm going to measure him to that. 
that value. So is that telling you, like when you saw the, all those orange, is that telling you to increase or decrease them? Right? Decrease or get him that amount of work in practice so he's prepared for the game. So if he has to do 1,300 yards every single game, you want to make sure that he's doing 1,300 yards, his body's used to it, and that's not 500, 500, 500, and then, hey, you know what, you got to run 1,500 yards today. That's how, like, hand trains and pick flexors and stuff like that go. So, preseason camp helps, too. So we we'll put them on them in preseason camp, and they kind of can warn you if you're about to reach, if you need to back off a little bit. Because yep. that tends to be a lot of times when we really put a lot of pressure and, and intensity on them. And yep. we use that as a metric sum as well. Yeah, and especially when you're going into the second year, you're really going to you're gonna know it, what those numbers are supposed to look like. So it's going to be even easier. You're going to notice the first week of, of preseason, like, hey, you're not working, we're not working, I'm not holding you to start ramping this up <laughs> 25, 30, 50, 75%. Uh, so you just kind of work it in based off of you know your kids, what their capabilities are, and then really what you're trying to do. If you have a deep team, you might want to see who you can push the furthest for the you know, first two weeks, but then you have to figure out a way to help tailor it back. Um, a lot of load management comes from this uh, player load number. So like this, and you give an allowance, say it's 2,000 per week. So once you get to 2,000, like you cut practice or you cut you know that player's drills or whatever it is. And that's kind of data that's been collected of what those ideal numbers are? It's or are not, you collecting data on the front end to set your parameters for later on? So like if I'm in practice and I'm collecting my data, and how do I know that my practice isn't flawed and that's not going to lead to yeah. flawed game data? Like are there numbers that so studies have been shown what ideal numbers are? Like I'm looking at player loop. Yeah. Just, just being naive and new. It says 425. Is there an ideal player load number? Is there Ideal. So it's in, it definitely is individual and team based. Your scheme and everything like that is going to adjust what those numbers are. <laughs> if you're running the running gun, it's going to you're going to have time mileage. Your player load is probably going to be up. You're going to have a lot of top speeds. But if you're ground pounding, you might run three miles. You know what I mean? So it really is an individual. And then you'll start to understand. Like, I didn't know what the numbers were before I got started. It can kind of, like, I didn't tell you now that I've used it. I'm like, yeah, okay, most are between five and seven miles. And, JP said anyone over 20 miles an hour is fast, right? So like I kind of have those numbers, but like you just kind of start working at it. Another sport is the work ratio, time working versus resting is 40 percent in football. It's 10, 15. So uh, do you use those every day in practice? Yeah, the whole not, not on this one, but yeah, I'm just like Monday through Thursday using them. Like yep, use them. That's the best way to do it. Some people. <laughs> Just don't do it. They go say, "Hey, we'll do it on just the days that we're actually like hitting and making contact." But the best way every day. Is you talk about your kids texting. Where's the data after the game? They also look at practice. Yeah, they can we're pulling in. They can see practices. They can see the games. Um, they can look it on the phone. Or they can walk into the website. So can you go back to that one screen that was the comparison? Yep. Anything particular? Just well, we put the uh, this one with two different players. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And that's because he got hurt in that game, so I just pushed it back. Hey, those numbers next to the bank, that's not their mad or anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is um, basically your distance, your street distance, the game values, right? The, that 100%, the orange and all that, they just divide it. So if it was 100% and 100% sprint distance and distance, it would say 100. So it's that stuff. I thought that was, I thought that was measured the key because you had the, the starter and the backup on there earlier. Oh, the one was 89, one was 88. I thought it was, it was compared to the left. Look, 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 Peter says you know that's good. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> I mean, it, it's uh, more individually based. Well, like if these are two running backs in a skilled position, you'd say like, hey, like you're not as explosive, you're not getting up to this, you know, the spring yard, you're not getting to those higher speed zones. Um, then Walter who's you know more of you know maybe more of an athlete, quicker and, and more of a you know, more of a stat that they both were, but he told me it was actually I would say a better running back, he was a better all round athlete. Like so, here, if you also are having issues with Tony, you come up here and you go, look how much red's on Walters him busting his ass around the field and, and really exerting himself 
and then you come over here and you go, yours is peppered with a couple of white arrows, which means probably you're walking off the ball. You know, this this right here, this maps out why Walter is starting over you. You know, and then you're like, well, listen, that's not a coach. That that's NASA. You know, I mean, because that's legitimately what it is. I mean, that y'all are wearing the same piece of equipment, and but now it's given yet you can pepper and say, all right, well, what happened here? I mean. We've got a spaghetti chart. I'll be able to pull that up, and that'll literally show you the path where you know during this quarter you walked this path on the field. So one of the big selling points to me about this is that because of technology, we have to be I put it up in the locker. 
room and say, hey, this is who hit it for the you know, top speed of the game, here's the top speed of the, of the week or the month. Um, and I think and it just drives, that's kind of like what pushes them in, in condition. It gives that little bit of, little bit of extra. Um, and then you can also do a percentage of that game value that we've been talking about. So your linemen aren't going to run as fast as your wide receivers. So you can basically do it, zap them off of the percentage of their game value, and then it moves people around. So someone that might not hit that top speed, like this kid went to know, is at Notre Dame. I can't, and always blows my mind that he's always at the bottom. But like, he, he performs on game day, we'll see how, I don't know how that goes. So like, you know, <laughs> no, <rolled> in there. <laughs> but like this, you know, like this is helps so they can just say, hey, you hit a top speed for yourself. Yeah, it might only be 13 miles an hour, but you only hit 12 last, you know, last six weeks. Um, and then you can even see, and this one's pretty cool, down at the bottom, you can see like the percentage uh, or you know how many games they did in X amount of sessions. So are you doing a marathon? Are you doing four games during the week on a Tuesday um, or by Wednesday? So you're able to pull that up and you know, this isn't the, sort of the best data for the board, but you can see how many games they, they did. So for like these kids, 1.4 games over the two sessions in that specific week. Ideally, during a during a game week, what would it be? For how many games would they play during a game week? You probably want to see around like three, maybe four. If like you know, again, it depends on what you're trying to get them ready for. But like in that range, including the game, including not, the, yeah, all sessions. All so sessions. a game, and then probably Tuesday, Wednesday would probably have to be a, a game, game and a half. Thursdays, you know, light days. Thursday, Friday, so. So really, from a practice perspective, you'd like for them to have the workload of two games during the week before they get to the game day. Yeah. Yeah, two. Uh, yeah, like around three. And all this data automatically is loaded for the coach. So. From the device. Literally, with the pod. The fellas, I use this. So. With the pod. All you do is you remove it from the vest and it clips in to a USB port. And as soon as you clip it in and turn the pod on and hit sync, yep. it pulls it out. It is automatically to all these different categories yep. that it for you. It takes one minute to sync. So when I come off the, when where Coach Ross goes to it's going to roughly take us about two hours. We'll have about two minute kids in each session. So we'll pull it right off of them and start syncing them up with three laptops doing 30 at a time. But for your sake, moving parts, it is literally old school pager with power button. And it just fits in the pocket between your shoulder blades. As soon as you get off, you have a coach sitting there with a laundry bag, everybody pulls them off, bam, you go to your office, probably by the time that they've showered, you've got it synced up. And it's pushed and you've got your, and everything comes over, software, hardware, vest, everything comes, you know, it, it's all part of the, the service. So and these go right under the shoulder pads. And you can reach them through the through the collar, so you don't have, they don't take the shoulder pads off. It just it's just part of their uniform. They put it on. I usually just slide it in between the shoulder pads when they're out on the field. Can you? I, I know I, I know what it is, but explain the, the call procedure. Also, at the same time, football's over. Now you got you got basketball track. I mean, it's it's all sports. So it's investment in your program, not just, and it, well, it's still individual, but yep. give you an opportunity to solve those. The only restriction is the GPS can't operate indoors. So if, you're, if it's an indoor practice, if you're, you're not going to get dinged just because the GPS isn't going to pick up. It's got to be outdoors. So that's the only restriction as far as being indoors and outdoors and stuff. So, but, uh, we all have track and field across soccer, um, field hockey if you have it down here, some of, the, some of the other sports that you could use it with and put some of the costs straight across the department. Um, football is one of our biggest. Honestly, it, it works great. It adds that different level of, like, that second set of eyes. Stuff, the stuff that you can't see on film. It's like what really brings, and this is what the pods really bring out. Um, so what's the cost? Cost of, it's an annual cost that starts at like 155 a pod and that includes everything. So 10 pods is like 1500 bucks. You're all in. If there's any issues with the 
Todd, so hey, coach, time to turn it on. He's popping out. Um, they're durable. They, I've left them outside for a week during a rainstorm, and then I charge it up for 20 minutes before the game, threw it in, they all work. I still, I'm still using those same pods that I left outside. Still haunts me. The first time I'd ever seen it work, Dean Boyd showed me. And how fast was your player running on that kickoff turn? 21.98, I think. Something like that. What world play? I think it's like 20. 23, 24. I think that's like Usain Bolt, something yeah. like that. I mean, yeah. they're, they're getting up there. Our benchmarks, so we use this in recruiting. So when we go scouting, we this is one of our three sets that we take on the road. We've got two sets of 50, and then we've got the big guy that comes around and it's 170 pots that we have boxed up. We use this in the scouting of players. We put them on, we've been out, we travel the country, we don't charge a player a single dime for anything that we do. Um, our company pays for our travel. We're affiliated with them. We're not collecting it from the South Carolina Football Coaches Association. This lives in our scouting database. So we have now developed a new metric and a new workout. And so for the guys in South Carolina, your kids come over to one of the three combines. Roughly about a week later, I will have a catapult workout prepared for you. I will email you a PDF copy every time a coach comes through there. And you can say, well, hey, here's also his catapult workout. You know? And that'll allow you, it'll give a, and, and what we're doing in South Carolina is we're trying to help y'all by just being a third party and being able to handle all of the metrics. So you don't have to worry about well, who was doing the time, who was doing the weight, it's, it's going to be all of us. So, but you'll be provided a catapult workout. If you have 10 guys, five underclassmen, five seniors, you'll have 10 sheets of paper that you can print out as many times as you want and hand to coaches. And it'll be, here's, here's what he did on this date at this location, and it'll have my name on it. So if they want to come cuss me, they can come cuss me. So, you know, but, um, and they'll all have this metric ready to roll on top of the film that we're going to do also um, with the um, Football Coaches Association. But what we've heard is over the year, we've been doing this just for this spring, the recruiting side of things, because that's where it's also gaining a high value is we are trying to link apples to apples. So all 32 NFL teams are using our wearable product right now. Majority of FPS programs are using our wearable product right now. The way that we equate it is if you've got a wide receiver at the University of whichever state, in certain line, and you've got a guy and we say hey, he's a really good player, and you've got this data, well now you can go into our system and pull the same metrics that you've got off of that young man, and you can filter it out and be able to say that, you know, Elijah Caldwell can run 21.4 miles an hour. And again, it's not who had the clock, it's not what's he on turf, what's he on this, whatever it may be. It's a verifiable game speed metric that you can use in the recruiting process also for these colleagues. And so we've had great results as far as you know, colleges asking for this data. Um, you know, we did it this fall in two states, Alabama and Arizona. We rolled it out there, and when the first Alabama report came out of there, we had two SEC programs go, are y'all really doing this? So we're like, yeah, and they go, well, this could be a cheat code in recruiting. So that's why we approached South Carolina Football Coach Association. And next year, we're trying to tie it in with probably about five to six more college, high school football coaches associations including some of the, uh, the ones in other geographical regions. So, but this is a metric that we have seen as high value when it comes to recruiting. And so that's why we will provide that for y'all. As soon as we pull the metric off and create the workout, it'll have your kid's headshot, it'll have all their contact information and all these metrics free no charge. So y'all can have it printed out as many times as y'all want to and get it as many years as you want to. JP, they go, you know, we're going to laser time and yep. have that. So it's going to kind of be the best of both worlds. So, yeah, so the workout, you get interesting data when you yep. do them both together. So the workout we've, we've created for that is it will include height, weight, hand size, wingspan, your laser time, your broad jump, your 5105. I think we've even included the L drill. And then along with the five pieces of metrics that come off of this with top speed, power plays, all of that metrics that we pull off here. And what we're using is the same product that we're talking that we've 
we've used for that, that's being rolled out as a high school product. So um, you'll be very familiar. Me and Gordon will be around. Gordon will be around both of these next um, two combines this coming weekend. So if there's anything that pops up, and y'all probably tired of seeing emails from me trying to get either spring practice dates or recruiting sheets or uh, your, your cell phone number, just so I can link up whoever we go. Uh, but y'all got my contact, and again, I'm here to be a resource for y'all. By no means am I trying to replace anybody in this room. So we'll get yeah. back to the price. One fifty five dollars. Yep. That's fine. It's, it's not a yearly lease. It's a uh, yeah, subscription. So that way we can swap all the hardware if there's any issues. If we come out with a new pod in a couple of years, every two years we can swap them out. So if there's a mechanical tube or something like that, so you're so not stuck. That's one big five a year. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the more you get, the price goes down. I mean, you know, that's with anything. Per pod. Per pod. Which now, when we say per pod, that is docking station, pod, vest, and also access to the software. So it includes all of that with the customer support. And there's truly is your squeaky wheel if you ever, if you ever have issues to look at the trouble. Yeah. So. Um, um, I had a question. You know, the data says proves that you have, and you've got uh, a 20% factor on your team that either are not going to get good enough ever, no matter what you do, 10% of them. And then you've got 10, and you've got another 10% that may always be larger. So if that leaves you with. If you got enough, if you couldn't afford any more, and you got 80 percent of your team these, how effective do y'all think that would be? Or say you're a real poor 1A school and you can only get five. But you can rotate. Yep. So yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You so John, go, okay, this week I'm, you know, we're going to work on the see how the tournament backs doing first. Yep. Yeah. A lot of them do. A lot of them will go. So say you have 10. Yeah, these 10 good. go on the offensive skill guys. They would pull the day off, then these 10 go on the defensive skill on Wednesday to just make sure we're monitoring what their workload is and how many miles per run and stuff like that. So or, you can't start with like as low a number as Oh, yeah. Yeah. So 10 is normally the solid starting point where you have enough pieces to actually get a good value of data off of your, off of your roster. So, so can you switch to mid practice? No. It's a different session. So you know, Unless you got my man over there on the laptop, you know, <laughs> taking it off, you yeah. know. So what, what you'll see us do on Saturday and Sunday this week is there'll be that window, that halftime between the seniors and junior session, and you're going to see three of our scouts over there just wheeling and dealing, head to sink, pulling 10 pods off, because we're going to turn around and use those same pods in the junior session. So as long as you dock it and get the Get it off the get it off the pod and into the system. You then can turn around. So, yeah, realistically, you could mid practice if you said, "All right, I want to pull the information off real quick, go a minute, and then put it on James, though, you know, and put it in his, and then get it rolling." So, the life the battery lifespan on these is about six hours. So we usually don't fear turning them on during a camp and everything, putting them on, you know. The only issue, don't turn them on, put them on the kid, and then hop in the bus, and you're like, man, that kid just hit seven bucks. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> just, just be careful of that. Yeah, we're, we're not going to put that in the system. You know, that's not going into our scouting database. So, yes, sir. The name time so you can insert names first. So, the kid has a profile in the system. Something like this. Every kid. Every kid. So what we've done is we so like this is pod 269. Yeah. So you know that hey, JP Gunner was wearing 269 today. So when you sync it up, it's going to say, all right, coach, you've plugged in pod 269. Who does this belong to? And you go into your system and you say JP Gunner this time. So what you'll see us do is at registration this weekend, it'll be it'll be like we're calling orders at the old school beacon in Sparkburg. You know, it'll be a hey, pod 269 is on player 1112. You know, and we plug it into the spreadsheet. So when we come in off of that session, we know that when we plug in 269, it goes to player 1112. So their profiles live in the system. So. And um, combat be a lot more complicated than regular practice. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It is controlled chaos when we go here on Saturday and Sunday. So, like for me, Adrian. He's 11, 
and they know what pods they are, and there's a few that rotate between some other players. So, like, Danny's always pod three, so he'd walk up to me and say, like, hey, coach, I'm pod three, and he would just take it. Um, so it remembers who were at last, and you only have to change it to someone else before it. So, two a days, you could leave it in, and you can run two sessions before you can have to sync it. Um, if you're doing a camp, if you might change your session after, so you, can just, change, you just change it. Um, and you can also put players like in their own session. So if this person was doing like injury rehab over here, or they were in the juniors, not the seniors, like you can make your own you know, session here. It's just a drag, quick drag. So pretty easy. Um, what combine are you doing? The South Carolina Football Coaches Association. So they're going to put on the Palmos Combine Series. So. Saturday and Sunday, and then we've also done, as you saw, people of mine over there. We, we've traveled around the country with this. I mean, you're, we, we've kind of gone anywhere and everywhere we can find the players. And then what we'll do this fall is Friday night. I'll reach out to Coach Hodge and say, hey, can I come over and put seven pods on the kid to get game speed? You know, and we'll get there for the game, slide them on, let them roll the whole night, pull them off of them, and that's what we so, but we have gone with wherever the kids are. I mean, so that's Carolina exposure. That was the Carolina exposure that we were over there and just, I knew that there were a couple kids that our college clients would like to have this day on. So I rode over there and just, you know, met the kids over there, threw it on, let them run around for the day and pulled it off of them. You know, we attached ourselves to VTO. Really, we attached ourselves to whoever just so we could figure it out. In a perfect world, we would like to stay attached to the high school football coaches just because it's one of the few sports that high school football coaches are still very important in the kids' life. You know? um, so we, we, when that opportunity was given to us, they couldn't offer it to us fast enough before we said yes. And so, but like this is an example of what I, how I live in the system. This is the top speeds from that session that we were out there. You know? One of those kids in the orange is a 2026 kid from Rock Hill. You know, I mean, that, you know, he's now got that data that lives in the system that is probably going to help him be evaluated sooner rather than later. So, but those are the common. So, Do you guys deal with like individual customers? Yes. So there is a like, like a parent. Yes. This is the new Fitbit for a high school athlete. You know, ultimately, and it's and it's all right. marketed toward. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. We're going to have a person down here on Saturday and Sunday. It, it's called a prosumer guide. It's, it's the individual one. But it, this product is, I mean, for the most part, the rebranding of this product is brand new. Um, so they do one. It's one point five. Yeah, uh, yeah. They do like they have a couple different options. Um, one of them they is a the small they go to the school. Huh? They go through the school, we had yes. 16 bucks. So, they, <laughs> so yeah, so the way that these work is like you can take this when the senior year, last game, you could give it to him, he can sign up his own individual account, keep the pod, you keep paying the 155, we'll send you another one. Um, I think it's like 16 bucks or something like a month, something along those lines, where they can buy it for like two or three hundred if they want to. Um, but they would have the same access, same database, same everything. Yeah. So. And they can sync it themselves if you're going to. So if they're off of one of these camps, they can sync it and it'll come up there too. So you'll be able to see it. Have y'all so saw that tied with you? Is that a market man of y'all? Oh yeah. yeah. We're we're yeah. we're one of the few that we just hoping to dip our time into it first before we have a lot more customer service on the back. Yeah, they need yeah. 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 when you got the boys by the third of them. Forty? No. But no, we uh yeah. You can, but it, it, that's mainly done if you go to passportsports.com and they seek it out. Yeah. You know. um, but okay. they can use it like it was their own individual one if they wanted to. For in the in the meantime. Any questions, fellas? We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank y'all very much.